دم المريض بالفيروس يرجعه له كفته الباقي دولة تلعب في مصر ده كاس العالم يا جماعه بيلعب في 32 دوله في ايه ladies and gentlemen John Stewart واوضح واعلى بكتير جدا من استمراره ومن اي حاجه هتلاقيها في البرنامج من الاخر الرساله وصلت Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. What makes you like Trump more than the other candidates? I mean, he's, he's literally saying he's going to make America great again. And you like that? I, I love that. Mad. I watched him on The Apprentice. How can we change Americans' perception about the Arabs? Do you think we need to rebrand ourselves? Why not? This is a better idea. I'm experiencing my freedom of speech and speaking in Arabic. What kind of tips can you give me to be a good terrorist? Well, first of all, I think you've got great eyebrows for that. Should I link it? So would you consider just being just less muslim -y? All of our guns that are on display here are coated in pig fat. That is very smart. I think the Second Amendment secures all your other rights. It's probably the most important. I call it the other First Amendment. I'm, I'm out here to get a gun. Where can I get a gun? I would not be able to answer that question. I have a shit ton of guns. I spend all my UFC money on guns. So I can give her that, and if she doesn't like it, I can take her out. No, no, I take her out. To dinner. To dinner. Yeah. Beauty of America is the mixed pot that this country is. The melting pot is full of MSG, or that's what I'm told. So you think it's a good idea to build a wall and create a lot of jobs? It's going to be too hard. What about the Mexicans? Let's talk about the problems that Flint has. It has water crisis. Does it have illegal immigration problems? No, it doesn't. So, so people don't want to immigrate to Flint? <laughs> no, no one wants to. Well, I believe that we have a domestic enemy. Who's the domestic enemy? Our federal government. I'm doing my own country. Would you like to join? I'm, I'm not sure for that. I'm sorry, I'm going to help you, Mr. 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 So you go from taking on the dictatorships of, of Egypt to Donald Trump. I actually didn't take any, on anybody. They kind of kicked me out, so. <laughs> Before you could really I, take I anybody on? I lost that battle, no. Yeah, yeah but uh, Donald Trump, I mean, I don't know why people are scared from Donald Trump. I mean, I know that he is a racist, bigoted, uh, xenophobic guy, but back in the Middle East, we call that Monday. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 think, I think you're too scared. I mean, he is actually, compared to our Middle Eastern dictators, he is quite cute. You know, democracy, I think the, the word democracy, and when people think of democracy in the United States, they think of a certain amount of, it denotes a, a certain kind of rationality that we imagine people to have, that they weigh the issues and then they vote for a candidate after weighing the pros and cons of that issue. <laughs> As you've gone out and met Americans and talked to them about their feelings in regards to politics, especially maybe those on the right, Donald Trump voters, but I would imagine some on the left as well, do you find that anyone is actually weighing the issues or they are just voting with no, their... I, I think they're weighing which candidate is the loudest and uh, which candidate is giving them the emptiest rhetoric ever. Which I, I, I have to say when I was in there in the uh, Trump rally, I, did, I was not shocked. I was not surprised. It was the same exact thing that I would find in the Middle East, people just following empty rhetoric, uh, empty fake patriotism that doesn't really lead to anything. I mean, they were just, it was kind of like being in an echo chamber. It's like they're repeating things that doesn't it really make sense. So there's this guy, I told him like, why are you uh, voting for Donald Trump? He's like, because he's gonna make the military great again. I said like, 
how many countries do you want to invade? I mean, you already invaded like so many countries. Why? I said, no, he's going to make the military great again. So I said, what else? Well, he's going to reduce federal spending, which is the exact opposite <laughs> of making the military great again. Uh, you would ask people, you'd think that if you would ask people about the most fundamental, fundamental things that uh, people will have uh, an idea about. So, for example, I, uh, I was there and I was asking, uh, he, tr Trump was going, we're going to repeal uh, um, Obamacare, we're going to uh, kill ISIS, and people are like, yes, we're going to bring back Christmas, and everybody goes, yes, like, where, did, where did Christmas go? <laughs> it's, You're not allowed... I don't know if you know this, you're not allowed to say Merry Christmas anymore. It's a yeah. big thing around here. I don't you know. know. Yeah, you have this, like, well, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, go screw yourself. It's, it's, oh, <laughs> it's, it's just like, it's like you have, like, I mean, it's the same thing when we had, like, the Islam is coming to power. So, like, Islam is coming. Where did it ever go? It's always been there. It's, it's the same thing with the war in Christmas and, and the red cups of Starbucks and people getting freaked out <laughs> about, about so many things. So it, it is the same thing everywhere. It's just like you, you're, you're talking to the basic instinct of, for people, like fear, suspicion, uh, 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 hate, uh, and, and it works. And, and the, the, the good thing about that for the candidates is that you really don't have to make any promises. And if you do, people will not hold you accountable because at the end of the day, it is the empty patriotism, the empty rhetoric. We need to go, they hate our way of life. We need to go and kill somebody. And you always find someone else to blame. Yeah. Do you find that uh, appealing to the sort of basic, uh, the basic instincts of, of humanity through this patriotism, through this sort of empty rhetoric, is sort of uh, usable, and we can we c it, it works because people are uneducated. There's distractions. Well, y you know that there is some educated people who support this kind of rhetoric, this kind of narrative. Not just here, but back in, in back in my countries. I mean, there are people in my country who are who are big believers that America is in an, an active conspiracy against them, and they send their people to study in Harvard and Stanford and pay taxes in America. And there are uh, many people who are it, using it, government assistance in America and it, believe that America yeah, is an active it, conspiracy against them. Yeah, it's it's like you have this kind of uh, you know George Orwell's 1984. You have double think, you have like you're having two totally opposing ideas, and they live. Uh, peacefully and nicely in the same space here. And, um, uh, it, it, and, and, and with, for example, with Trump as an example, and the same, like, I'm, I'm just using Trump as like a close reference, but back in, in, in Egypt and, and, or in the Middle East, the same thing. Uh, politics is too complicated. So we simplify things. So we go and say like, it's, it's either this way or the highway. And it's easier. And when people found Trump talking this way, it's like, oh, I can relate to that because I don't want to tolerate anybody else. And it works. And uh, I don't want to hear the complicated ins and outs. Of oh, the yeah. It's like, why? It's just like, just give me an enemy, a bunch of people to hate, and I'm behind you. In many ways, that's how I think uh, Hillary, not to get too deep into the sort of the election this year, but how Hillary sometimes sets herself back. She is a brilliant politician. She knows the ins and outs, and she's very willing and upfront in how she deals with those politics. And I think a lot of people just don't relate to that whatsoever. Yeah, it's just like... Yeah, consider her an elitist. Well, well at the end of the day, Hillary, whatever, she is the example of the establishment, and we hate the establishment, which is, by the way, produced. It's, like the, the, it's kind of, again, it's a double thing. Well, the Republican Party is part of the establishment. How can you tell me that, like, oh, it's the politicians, where you are full of politicians, and you are the people partly responsible of why the system is not working. I mean, as an outsider, I was just like, I, w I was amazed at how was like an issue like gun control, how all of these candidates are openly funded by the on, uh, NRA and the, and, and the gun lobby. It's so obvious, it's so simple it's and It's so obvious. obvious and simple. So these people basically are on the payroll yeah. to block a certain resolution to protect the American people. And it's fine, and they still keep their places, to keep their positions and re-elected, and it, doesn't, it just goes by. I mean, they could, uh, they could go on, uh, in the, the media, they could go on CNN and they could say, well, I'm funded by the NRA, and so, yeah, I'm therefore, I believe NRA, I that guns are... I mean, I'm, I'm of course, like, I'm, I'm the last person to speak. I mean, at least, guys, you have, like, a functioning democracy somehow. I mean, back, I mean, from where I come from, it's much easier. It's a dictatorship. Fuck you. That's it. 
we're going to do whatever we want. Like, you just have to follow. That's it. I mean, it's so simple. At least here, you get to complain. Nothing gets done, but you get to complain. But back there, you get to, compl to complain, you get to go to jail. Uh, that's uh, very simple. Do you, uh, when was the last I, I, th I think it's just, like, easier where I come from. When was the last uh, you're time spending you so much money pushing that democratic process. Sorry. No, when was the last time you were in Egypt? Uh, a year and a half ago. Do you miss, do you miss home? I, I miss the mangoes. <laughs> I'm sorry, the, the mangoes in Egypt. I mean, I'm sorry, you guys here, the mangoes, like, it's a beautiful country, but the mangoes here taste like cucumber. <laughs> mangoes, you have to do something with the mangoes, with the fruits. Big, colorful fruit, but no taste whatsoever. And now Anybody who went to the Middle East or Latin America will understand what I'm saying. Yep, yep. You should try the mangoes. The mangoes? Yeah, oh, the mangoes. Are you saying mangoes? The mango, the what? The mangoes. Oh, the mangoes, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've been, yeah. to, I've been to Egypt and I've been to... Uh, what, what, what did you think I was saying? I manuals. Manuals? Mangoes. Mangoes, okay. I got it. All right. That's why I wasn't talking. I got to be honest with you. I was just, I was just like, yeah, sure, the go mangoes. ahead. Manuals. Okay. <laughs> mangoes and the watermelons. <laughs> the melons. Okay. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the Arab Spring and what happened in Egypt uh, after the ousting of the sort of longtime dictator and president and the installation of Mubarak and now El Sisi and how that affected you? I know that's a very broad wow. question, but how that affected you, you have five and your hours. relationship <laughs> and your relationship to the possibility of a democracy in Egypt? Well, well we like we, there was kind of like a window. I mean, we, this Arab Spring. I know now it's called uh, the Arab Winter, the Arab Disappointment, or the Arab. Uh, zombie apocalypse, but at that time we had a window of opportunity. And, uh, you know, after 30 years of Hosni Mubarak, which we call a first term, uh, yeah, Mubarak is the, the, so after 30 years in office, which is like, that's the, uh, one term in the Middle East, uh, we, we, we had a chance. But uh, you had uh, what we call a deep state that's been there for 60 years and they did not allow it to happen. You had the uh, the Islam is coming to power who gave basically a bad name from democracy. So pay, people kind of like fall, fell back to what's, um, what's always acceptable and, and, and safe in their opinion, which is the military. So the military took over and um, this is where we are right now. And how did it become unsafe for you? When did you start to realize it was unsafe for you in terms it's, of your... It's your kind comment? of like when you find, like you, my show was like... Uh, stopped a couple of times then my signal was jammed a couple of times and then you had like all of those all uh, lawsuits pouring in uh there's a way that you push people to do the lawsuits and then you find yourself uh losing verdicts and 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 and, and suits that, that you should not lose so you know that that it's it's going to come a point where they would either like uh prevent you from leaving the country or even uh frame you for something uh, and it will never be for freedom of speech. It will be for something else, something financial, something technical. Uh, and uh, so I decided, like, you know, it's, it's time to leave. It's so interesting that it would never be for freedom of speech, that even dictatorships across the world know that, like, uh, jailing someone for freedom of speech will call it, cause a sort of no. international outcry, so you have to come up with some kind of... It will be something else. It will always be something else. Taxes, um, illegal money, money laundering, uh, I, uh, uh, Mendling with, uh, uh, I don't know, trolls. Uh, it, it, they, they will find. They will find something. They will find something that uh, looks legal, and they will put you there. And you are the type of person which I uh, admire so much in the sense that you are uh, sort of addicted to uh, raising your voice. You know, when you didn't have a show, you created another show and put it on YouTube, and then that built a show yeah. for you. And then when you when you left Egypt, you came to the United States, and you found ways to talk about the powerful in the United States. Before all of this, you were a surgeon, and you still have a surgeon's license, correct? Uh, a heart surgeon, yes. You're a heart surgeon. Yes. When did you start to realize that you had this voice deep inside of you, that you needed to sort of poke fun and, and sort of uh, poke, uh, poke at power a little bit? When they gave me a good contract with a good amount of money, <laughs> so I decided that this is it, you know, screw medicine. How did, how did that happen? They, just, they were going through the medical school with comedy contracts? They are like, what well, surgeon here wants to be a comedian? <laughs> no, I, well, here's the thing. I mean, at the end of two, uh, 2010, I was just preparing to go to uh, Cleveland. Uh, I had a, um, a contract there waiting for me, uh, but, like, you know, the visas were just taking too long. H-1 visa for all of you illegal immigrants. Uh, it, it was taking too long. And um, uh, by, 
like as I was waiting, the revolution happened, and when it happened, I did these uh, videos on YouTube. I didn't expect anything out of it, maybe 10,000 views. And in two months, I had like five million people watching, and uh, I had a contract, uh, a TV contract. And, and I said, well, there's TV contract, you now empty fame and money, and there is medicine and saving people lives, so I chose the money. <laughs> Because to be I'm honest, a, you chose the empty fame. Because I'm a sellout, and uh, and for my mom, of course, as a Middle Eastern mom, she was happy that I stayed, and um, so it coined and 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 the, and the other side, they were Cleveland, and they at that time they wouldn't they weren't winning any NBA's uh, NBA <laughs> trophies, so even LeBron James was not there, so I said I'm just gonna stay. <laughs> no LeBron, no surgery. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, so I I stayed. I did it for the money. No, I, it's just, it, it's, there was an op opportunity because having the chance actually to, um, there, there was like a lot of anger involved with doing the, the, those uh, YouTube videos because I wanted people to uh, hold those people responsible of brainwashing the masses accountable. Uh, I, it was kind of a memory uh, stick for people to remember how these people were uh, manipulating them. And uh, to have the chance to continue doing that uh, was a blessing. So uh, I continued doing it until I couldn't do it anymore in, in, in my country. So I, I came. And now uh, the story goes that you got the inspiration to do this after having seen The Daily Show. And oh, yeah. John Stewart. For, for, many years, for many years. For many years. years. Yes. He's a, gr he's a great guy. And uh, uh, meeting him in person was one of the best things that I had. Like, uh, I ever had in my life. He is he's a genuine person, very funny person, uh, extremely involved in what he's doing. And, uh, you know, it's a loss for everybody that he had to leave. But, you know, it's after 17 years taking the... I mean, a after three years, I was kind of like tortured in this kind of routine of doing the show. He's been doing it daily for 17 years. So he, he deserves the rest. Absolutely, it's incredible what John and Stewart accomplished. Uh, yeah. One of one of the greats. How does it feel when people refer to you as the Egyptian John Stewart? Yeah, please do. <laughs> please, I mean, having my name with his name in the same sentence, yeah, please do it. He's 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 so nice about it. He said, like, I'm I'm the American Bessie Musifu, which is something that is like warms my heart. Uh, it's kind of like what he stands for is being a watchdog of media and authority, and this is what we try to do in Egypt. And uh, it, it also it, it it makes it easier for people for references. So he goes like, "Hey, my uh, I'm doing this and this." It's like, "What exactly?" I am the Egyptian Zon John Stewart. It's like, "Oh," so it helps. It kind of like shortens your uh, conversation to introduce yourself. <laughs> Very practical. Uh, now, you're in the United States now for the last year and a half. You have the show coming out on Fusion. I believe the, the, the dates that they all go on the website is July 11th? July 14th. July 14th. And that special is July 17th. The special is July we've 17th. Been, we've been feeding you this in the if, back uh, room for fi 15 minutes now. Your PR 14 14 and 17. Is out there. I apologize. <laughs> we went over this. <laughs> just, just kidding. Just kidding. Um, what's it like for you? I think a lot of Americans would imagine that coming from, they imagine Egypt as being a, a, a country under the control of a dictatorship. So ignorantly, I think they would imagine a, a, a lack of freedoms or, or much less freedoms the United, as the, than the United States. But what's it like for you coming to the United States and trying to experience the, the daily life of, of an American? Do you notice more similarities than difference? Well, I always say this, like there's, I mean, I was, I'm never surprised in the United States. There's nothing that your sitcoms didn't tell me. So I am, I'm prepared every, Wait, your, every day. Okay, I know your, exactly what's happening. Outside of John Stewart, <laughs> what sitcoms from the United States do you think taught you the most about the country? Oh, well, well every, everything taught me something different. So for example, you had friends who taught me about the life of New York, about like six adults living in two very spacious uh, apartments, <laughs> although they didn't have that much money, but... Uh, like having sex with everybody. Yeah, that was great. Uh, but like I would have to say that uh, the best uh, sitcom, uh, my best sitcom is Frasier. It's very, it was very, very intelligent. And I didn't get it in the beginning. Actually, the, so Friends was very easy, slapstick, whatever. It, it took me a while to understand more about the culture, to understand Frasier. At the beginning, I, did, I didn't watch so, and then I, I, I followed it. And the, the, so, but there's, the, there's many shows, not, not just that. There's, uh, 
I like Arrested Development. I like uh, um, no one Arrested Development. No, nothing. <laughs> Yeah, nothing. Okay. Sorry, this is a. You d you don't have to clap. I mean, this is an audience solely made of Frasier fans. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> South Park, Family Guy, nothing. <laughs> All right. So what's it? So what's it like for you going around the country? You know, in the in the trailer, you're you're buying guns. You're at a Trump rally. Yes. You say you're not that surprised by anything in America yeah. based off of what you saw on be TV. Be because but I have to say that like your media prepares people to have come here, especially. The news, the comedy, the comedy shows, like what talks about the news and talks about politics. So I have to say that I was pretty much educated by The Daily Show, by Stephen Colbert. I mean, these were my educator about like my entry into American politics. At the beginning, I didn't understand what was John Stewart. Doing. What is Democrats and what's Republican? What the hell is Fox News and why is he mentioning all the time? And now I know it, it takes you five minutes of Sean Hannity to understand. And uh, it is, um, uh, it, 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 so for me, like coming into the issues of gun control or, um, uh, or immigration, it, it was, it's kind of like I was, hi I was hitting the floor, uh, r ground running, floor running, ground, floor ground, ground. Hitting the ground running. Ground, thank you very much. English is a second language. And um, uh, so I was kind of like, kind of prepped, all of the talk about the, the second amendment and uh, talk of, uh, of the gun control, it, it, it was kind of, it, it was coming easily for me. Um, what about, uh, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but what about being an Arab man, speaking to people at Trump rallies, speaking to people at uh, gun shows, I was inherently I people I that have a prejudice, be it political or just personal and emotional to uh, Arab nations? I was posing as an Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true, really? <laughs> well, they didn't ask. And who, whoever asked, I would say, like, where do you think I am from? But the thing is, it's not like I'm an Arab. It's like, what? No, they were like, oh, hi. <laughs> they would be like... You find, you find that the, the personal prejudice so often with, 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 not to generalize with people like that, the personal prejudice doesn't actually exist. It's all sort of an ethereal, political it, it, uh, it's the, sort of it's la the, lack it's of the understanding. Masses. It is just the masses. But, like, the, the, there's one time in, in the Trump rally where there's like a, a kid... I think he tore down the uh, the sign for Trump. So people kind of mob, like getting him out and kind of like beating him up and pushing him. So that's the guy right next to me is like, take him to a mosque. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, take him back to a mosque. And the guy was like a white American. He had nothing to do with Islam or Middle East or a mosque. And, uh, but he would have fit right in, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, just take him back to a mosque, go to a mosque. And uh, <laughs> there was, uh, and there was this guy who I interviewed. It is a whole, uh, it's a whole episode about uh, um, entrepreneurship of hate. This guy in Florida, the Florida gun control, the guy who would not uh, had uh, a no, uh, a Muslim free zone, not allowing people to actually buy guns from his sh uh, gun store. It's, it's great. You're gonna you're gonna love the episode. So we went there. And I, he, we did not tell him that like I am Muslim or Arab. So I went into the store and I interviewed him for a whole hour. hour. And the, the amount of stupidity and hatred and ignorance that came out in that interview was, was like astronomical. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and he didn't know, but like as I went out, uh, he asked me in the middle, uh, where are you from? I was like, I still, I, I'm half Italian. Thank God he didn't ask what the other half is. And uh, as I moved, we got him actually on tapes. Like, is this guy Muslim? Was I set up? We got him on tape for that. And it's in the episode. So uh, he kind of, and he was, he, 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 he kind of like openly talked about like how we all Arabs and Muslims should all guy, go to hell and die and exterminated it was v so much fun i was keeping a straight face this guy owns thing. a gun shop oh yeah yeah and he has like a whole community who share his um his great values yeah, you said that's something that you're not surprised by is that something that you're not surprised by because you learned it from watching television about what america's like or is hate of that nature not surprising to you because all countries no, yeah, populations w that w well, it's basically too like because I've seen that on television a lot and also and with the internet there's no barriers you don't really need to uh, watch a network but if you're curious about hate go on the internet but, but I have seen I have seen that brewing in my own country and I've seen how people are driven 
into a certain narrative, whether by using religion or using patriotism in hating the other. I have seen, I mean, you have all of, I mean, uh, you have all of these bombings in the Middle East. It's all like a, a, a result of hate and xenophobia and hating the other. And uh, uh, it's, it's a great tool. It's, a, it's the greatest weapon ever, fear, because it makes you not just um, hate someone else, it makes you accept when that someone else is jailed, tortured, or killed. He is less of a human. It's, it, it's a way of dehumanizing the other. This is the, way, the, the, this is the way whole countries and nations go to war. You dehumanize your enemy. So it's fine to kill them. It's fine to, uh, to burn them alive. It's fine to put them into gas furnaces. You dehumanize the other. And I have seen that happening every single day back home. And I'm seeing a, like kind of a virgin of it here. So, um, yeah, um, I think we were, I was prepped uh, okay. Well, I think, I mean, that preparation in terms of America's hatred and in, in, in creating fear goes back to the Bush administration with your other with us or against it, us. It that was kind it of... It goes back to the McCarthy era. Yeah. It goes back to the Jap when the Japanese were put into concentration camps. It's not the... It's go back to the civil rights movement. It goes back when the uh, LGBT community were suffering in the 1970s getting their rights. It goes back, it's, it's, it's repetitive. It's not the first time. I mean, today it's the Muslims. Before that, it was someone else. And after that, hopefully we will relay the torch to someone else. Like, here you go. They hate you now. And um, it's, it seems that... Uh, what will it be? Like, I don't know. I, I, I think, I think, you, so I think with us you've hit rock bottom. I don't know how can we rebound from that now. Um, like New Zealand or something. Uh, I, I, you, you'll find something. You'll find some. I, mean, I, I, think, I think big uh, um, uh, like systems uh, need to find some sort of an enemy. Need to find something to kind of project their hate and to project their uh, anger towards. Because... If you don't, if you don't have that someone, suddenly it's only you. So all the failures, all the incompetence, is now it's like the, the anger of the people will be directed to you. So you need to divert their uh, their attention to someone else. We also have economic reason to to have that as well in this yeah, country. Yeah, but, but it's the same thing. Same thing. Whether in the west, whether in the east, you need that that mm -hmm. thing to divert people's attention to. Uh, let's open it up to the audience for questions. Who has a question? I have a question. Hey, I'm so excited to watch this. And I wanted to know what you thought about how our country tries to change the laws kind of through social media or by calling a hotline or the, this, the filibuster thing. Online or filibuster because they're two okay, different. Okay, so let's go with the filibuster because yes. I kind of don't get that. And I tried to call and I just got a full voicemail. What, what, the filibuster for guns? Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't understand the filibuster. I, if I, 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 I see people taking the floor and not moving and try to block it. I, I remember during the, when the Democrats has the House, the Republicans were doing that a lot. And now I see the Democrat doing it and they even have a sit-in and it didn't, did it, did it, did it make any change? No, it's just the con gun control, basically. And I think, uh, I, I don't know how can you uh, overcome the fact that you have a majority of people who are just being paid by a lobby to block that thing. It, it's just, you know, what's really, uh, what's really interesting for me, it's not just like they can't pass a law. They ca the, the Congress, has, has, since 1996, have blocked the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, to make any research regarding the dangers of gun control. So you're not even allowed to scientifically pursue the effect of uh, gun sales, which is crazy. There's which a is, for me, it's crazy. So in one word, what do you think? I think it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was a great quote from, uh, from Obama a few weeks ago, too, when he was asked in a town hall about gun control. And yeah, one of the things, I, I remember that, yeah. The thing that he said was that, you know, in, in the 60s, there were no seatbelts or in the 50s there were no seatbelts and people were dying all the time and they made modifications to cars and people stopped dying as much. Yeah. Whereas like, if, if, if you view guns as a safety issue, as you a can't As make a matter of fact, just two weeks ago, Ikea has recalled 30 million pieces of hairdresser because it killed six toddlers. Six toddlers, so they recalled 30 million pieces. So 
that six that's actually the number of people shot a day basically in the states i guess so uh i don't know it's just uh, it's too much money being spent onto this the same thing happened 1991 1992 when the um th the fda tried to regulate supplement uh, in uh, industries and the supplements paid huge money to block that so you have all of these supplements in gnc that you can buy bullshit basically and they're not regulated and it's fine it's like it will grow your hair not fda approved and people will buy it so uh, it, it, it just, it's money uh, so i don't know if like it, the, the, the bigger discussion here is that a democracy or an oligarchy so next question hi um i find it very interesting how you talk about um politics objectively when it's become very subjective um and it's just like we have our points of view and it's very hard for us to talk civilly to each other. It like gives me anxiety to talk about it or not express my point of view, but it's very hard to learn about other points of view when it's so one-sided. So do you have any advice for talking with other people about politics civilly? Remove yourself from the conversation, basically. Like you try to, I mean, this is actually the definition of being objectively. It's. It's like the, the problem with the politics, I mean, we have had this in Egypt in the past four years. There were like a lot of divorces because of politics. There's a lot of people who did not talk to their family. They're not talking to their family anymore because of politics. The country was kind of like split in half. And uh, I can advise you, I can give you any advice I want, but like, I don't know if it's gonna work. Uh, it, it is, it's kind of like, uh, because I've tried that and it didn't work because you find the other person. I mean, uh, my relationship with my father and my mom was basically burdened by this. Uh, they were like all of like, you know, the fear worked with them. Uh, the, all of this military, we need the military, whatever. And uh, although they were directly harming me, but they didn't see that. It is very hard and I understand what you have, but like at least here you don't have an oppressive fascist military government then controlling so at least there is a space for change and maybe you have a very heated conversation if you are a, a, Sand, a Bernie Sanders a supporter uh, with uh, and but I'm, I'm sure that most of your uh, fights are with the Hillary Clinton supporter not with the Trump supporter which is I find it very interesting you guys the Democrats are kind of basically having a civil war right now uh, I'm a Bernie su supporter by the way and I'm supporting him just the fact that as a Muslim, I can say I'm supporting a Jew, so nobody can ever accuse me of being anti-Semite. <laughs> so if I ever say, so it was like, hey, you're an anti-Semite, I support Bernie. <laughs> That's it. So, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. But I, I, it's hard. I mean, as a matter of fact, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm like, I can give you all of the... Uh, the chapters of the book, how to speak civilly to each other. But, you know, uh, as a 42 years old, pretty much older guy, I kind of like, I don't give a shit anymore. So it's like, yeah, fine. Well, it's kind of the way Which is something that you will reach sooner or later, maybe in your 50s, like, well, oh, fine, <laughs> whoever, doesn't matter. But the, the youth and the heat of the moment, it's like, ah, screw you all. And then after 10 years, ah, we should have like got this dinner finished. And um, yeah, 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 sorry. sorry. But that kind of helps in terms of how, uh, when it comes to having conversations like this or having conversations with people who are very heated, it becomes sort of Socratic on your part. You just pose questions. Yeah, you pose questions. But like at the end of the day, you end up kind of unfriending half of your timeline on Facebook. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that feel, but that feels good. Right? That's like... Right? You have fewer friends now on Facebook, see? So you shouldn't die alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question. Hi, thanks for being here. Um, so working as a heart surgeon, as you did, and then in television, as you're doing, um, or web, I was wondering how you get your stamina, because both involve a lot of long hours. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm, uh, well, basically, being a heart surgeon learned, uh, taught me one thing, that I'm a nerd, so I kind of like stick it up and just like go through it because I have to finish it. Nobody else will finish the job. So being a nerd helps because you have, I have absolutely no life. And, um, but the stamina, if you're talking about stamina, I, I do a lot of sports uh, and I eat uh, right. I'm uh, plant-based mostly. 
vegan, kind of, you know, and it helps. And uh, yeah, that's my physical uh, advice to you. Go plant-based, go vegan, yay. Uh, I'm plant-based, I have a Prius and I live in California, so I fit right in. <laughs> I think we have time for one more question. Next question. Hey, uh, Basim, uh, Eid Mubarak. And um, I was wondering, like, do the topics that you were covering in, uh, back in the Middle East, are they different than what the, t the topics here? And uh, it's the media coverage, some the different... Uh, you, you, you'll be, well, well, first of all, the media, there's only one kind of media, which is basically state-run media, or private channels who basically uh, adopt the government. So we don't have basically two medias, it's only one media. But you'll be surprised that stupidity is the same everywhere, and the, the, and the textbook of dictators is quite slim. And uh, it's the same thing. Uh, it's just different with the different language, different references. But you will be surprised if uh, it's just like uh, ours is more ludicrous. That that how the lies and the uh, the brainwashing is just like right there in your face. Uh, I can tell you a few things that you, you'll be like, "What? Seriously, you have this?" Uh, and then you, your biggest problem here is like a bunch of emails and. Um, uh, ours is like the government telling you that we have invented a cure for AIDS. And people believe that. And uh, anybody who objected to that will go to jail uh, or lo lose his job. So um, it's, 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 it's just relative. But the same stupidity, the same lies, uh, different narrative. Wait, is that, is that story true, the government? Yeah. Can you tell that? Can you talk well, about that? Well, basically, bit? the military uh, 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 base says, like, we have found a cure for AIDS and hepatitis C and for diabetes and for everything, just like one cure. And our government and- Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the military's like, uh, and, and, and I have to say that my team was scared because it's the military, you cannot make fun of that. So I went ahead with the story and I actually hit it every single week. And uh, they actually had a deadline, so I had a counter next to me, like counting down for the deadline. And they took me out, to took the, the show out and that was, three years ago and the deadline was only two months ahead so so far they never had the, sh the cure and people didn't doesn't care because it's the military they can do whatever they want right and they actually don't believe that they have the cures but it's like no so so, so that now the alternative story is that that was um, uh, a trick to pressure pharmaceutical companies so they can release their uh, cure in Egypt with less money this this is basically the story seriously yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, I have more of this. <laughs> you, my show is translated, subtitled in English. You can, there's a lot of that. Where, uh, yeah. There. Yeah. But uh, the new show is July 14th, right? They're all going to be on Fusion on the on the web on Fusion's website. And July 17th, there's a one-hour special of Democracy Handbook, right? Yes. Yes. And I hope you like it, guys. And the thing is, the the one thing that I want to get out of this is that I'm a foreigner. I'm not American. I'm talking about American issues. The fact that like I'm giving the chance by an American network and having an audience of American people. This is something that I really appreciate and I hope that uh, people don't think that I have stepped out my boundaries or I've like, you know, who are you to speak about our politics? So I hope that will that I'll be accepted by the, uh, the public and uh, thank you so much for the support and share even the people who are you unfriended, kind of like, <laughs> send them messages like, I know we're not talking to each other, but you should watch this. And, uh... <laughs> awesome. thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Congratulations you on the show.